What's up guys, Kevin with Badline Industries. Today we're talking about how to set up an onboard air tank system for your overland or off-road rig. Uh, comment below, let me know what you would put this kind of system on. Um, I've got a Colorado, I'm putting uh, 40s on it, six liter. It's gonna be a blast. So if you guys wanna check it out, I suggest you subscribe to the channel. But don't click just yet, I wanna earn your subscription. Let me know at the end of this video, if you guys found this content informative or you enjoyed it then give me a like give me a subscribe i want to earn your subscription so some of this video will pertain specifically to the maxi track compressor that uh, we did some work on in my last compressor video a couple weeks ago uh, this will actually work for just about any compressor system that you've got uh, arb vir whatever you got um, you can run a tank just like this, but what I'd recommend is watching this video through and taking the information that I can share with you guys and adapting it to your system. Why would you want to run a tank instead of just your compressor? Tanks are great for storing air, so think of it kind of like a battery. Um, your alternator creates power, much like a compressor creates compressed air, but your battery is what stores it. So when your vehicle's not running, you can still use that air. Uh, likewise, if your vehicle's not running, this 90 amp draw will suck down your battery in a heartbeat. Uh, having a tank will allow you to run stuff for a short amount of time without having to turn back on. Um, I wouldn't be airing up a tire or anything like that, but blowing something off, uh, your floor mats, you, your dog, for those reasons, having an air tank instead of just a compressor will benefit you out on the trail by now you've probably heard of this maxi track compressor from napa unfortunately they're not available at the time of making this video they kind of sold out instantly you can still get them from like aliexpress but they're about 250 bucks still not a bad deal but uh, a hell of a lot more expensive than the 120 bucks that uh, uh, napa charged initially i'm hoping that napa does kind of a Gen 2, kind of a Mark II, kind of like the Kings did, um, to include the pressure switch, to include some more standard fittings. Uh, it would render my first video obsolete, but it would make for a much better compressor. So don't click away just yet. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one so that you guys can watch this through and get an idea as to what's going on, and then go watch that video about the pressure switch. But first, let's go to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys the diagram of the pieces and parts and how they all interact and then we'll come back to the bench and show you guys exactly how to install them and how they all work together all right so this is a cylinder head from the maxi track compressor basically this has some reed style check valves in here that are pushing against o-rings so there's no need for something like an unloader valve we were having a conversation recently in one of the facebook groups whether or not these compressors needed that if we were to include a tank in that system that valve is kind of like when you pump up your shop compressor and it goes psh, when it hits the pressure. That's relieving the pressure between the cylinders and the tank. So um, we have found that we don't need that because this style of reeds or uh, style of valve that's on these heads. You've got your battery, your compressor, you can clip that like the alligator clips like you would uh, normally. Or you can hardwire it kind of like an Anderson plug like I plan to do. But basically, you'll take the pressure switch that you initially put inside of the case and you're going to move it to the tank. We want to gauge the air in the tank and not just the air in the line going to the tank. From there, you get the check valve. This just keeps the air in the tank if something were to happen to this line. Safety valve, uh, get an adjustable one. I'll put a link for that one below. Set it just above your pressure switch so uh, it blows after that uh, maxes out. A gauge, uh, you can do a digital one in the cab, but I would recommend just a standard analog one on the tank itself. So you can just at a glance, see what pressure you've got going on. Obviously you gotta put your air somewhere, you gotta use it. The whole point of having this is to be able to use that. So having some sort of an outlet on the tank itself makes it serviceable so you can potentially take this tank out and not have to uh, disassemble your entire system. Or if you just need one outlet, that's fine. Perfect, one thing. Drain valve also, especially if you've got a steel tank, you wanna get that moisture out of there. Uh, it's better for the system to be dry 
but uh, we all know in off roading situations that's not always possible. So uh, draining this periodically would help and having a drain valve is paramount to the life cycle of this system. So let's go back over to the workbench and I'll show you guys in person what this looks like and how all of these pieces fit on one tank. So this was my pressure switch that I had put into the compressor before my last video. This is a 90 to 120 on and off. Uh, this actually proved to be too high because this compressor would not pump this tank up to 120 PSI. It would get up to 120 and then it would it just would stall out. I couldn't get any, any more pressure than that. So I bought 170. So it turns off at 100 and turns back on at, at 70. You guys will see here in a minute that this works absolutely flawlessly and I'm pretty happy with it. So full disclosure, I used a couple parts that I'd already had here in the shop to make this video for you guys. Um, what I will do is I'll put a link to every piece that you would need to get this running from scratch. Even the tank, I'll give you guys a couple links to a couple different tanks that I find on, on Amazon to kind of give you guys A to Z, everything you need to make this happen. I've got the wires down to my battery and, and charger down here so I can actually run this on 12 volt here in the shop. Um, the pressure switch, I added a little jumper. This would have, these two legs would have gone to the two legs on the pressure switch we installed in the first video. That's pretty simple. So all I'm doing is I'm putting it over here instead of right here. And now it's in the tank. I've got a gauge in the tank like I showed you guys in the diagram. I've got my outlet, I've got my inlet over here. Um, so let's turn this thing on and I'll show you guys that it'll pump up for a little while and then cut off at 120. All right, here we go. There we go, 100 PSI, it turned off. Now, even if I turn this compressor off, we still have air, we still have 100 PSI of air. It's like, like a battery, like I said a minute ago. So now you can use this to blow off stuff, you can uh, basically use it for whatever you want. Um, you could even turn the compressor off and run it down. <laughs> uh, you run it for a while now and the compressor is not on so blowing stuff off like i said um having this helps um inflating your tires it'll allow this to pump up and turn off while you're still uh using the nozzle to pump your tires up so it decreases the run time uh running it down to 100 will also help uh you're not trying to push it past that that 120 took forever to even get up to and then it just wouldn't quite push past that. So I'm thinking that 100, or if you find like a 105 or 110, uh, I can put links to those as well, would be an absolute perfect setup for a tank like this. All right, so now you guys are gonna ask, how does this do running an air tool? Well, I'll show you guys. We're gonna do a, kind of a scientific test. We're gonna run it with the tank, and then we're gonna run it just on the compressor alone. So I'm going to actually plug this guy in. We're at 100 PSI and you guys can listen to this now. Alright, so there's no air in the system. Now I've got it just plugged into the compressor. We're going to turn this on and I'll show you guys how fast this goes just in the compressor instead of the 100 PSI that's in here. Alright, so you guys can see that I still have a lot of pressure built up and then once it gets down below 70 kicks back on. So you guys can see that having that pressure tank stored air is good for air tools. 
impacts, stuff like that, grinders, uh, this little air wraps like that. So for like trail repairs or uh, something like that would be a good thing to have in certain situations. That about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is a pretty simple setup. I'll put links to everything that you guys are gonna need to make this yourself from scratch in the description below. No questions, no confusion, A to Z. Click it down below. I get a small commission. I'd appreciate it if you guys do that. It helps me do these videos for you guys. I hope you found value in this video. I hope that uh, I was able to show you some stuff and maybe with this new knowledge, you guys can go out and make your own onboard air system. Um, if you want to follow along with any of the other build videos that I'm doing with my truck, like I said, I'm putting 40s in a 6 liter in my solid axle Chevy Colorado, uh, subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this kind of overland stuff that I'm kind of stepping into, uh, gear and whatnot, subscribe to the channel. Um, I genuinely want to create content that you guys want. This was actually a topic that somebody talked about in my last video. I think I'm going to follow this video up with things to look for. Um, I actually took this apart just today and found glue inside of the cylinder wall. So that's no good. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Click this video right here. That'll give you the direct link to the how to put a pressure switch and modify your maxi track compressor. Thanks for watching.